Welcome to my series, Science and Creativity. To accompany the practical demonstrations of playing with science and scales, I am delivering this spoken narrative with slides to further explain and articulate those same concepts and how playing with science in scales is the 21st century approach to not only making friends with scales, but in learning scales in a way that will never be forgotten. Never would I have imagined I would be promoting grade five theory. And yet over the years, knowledge which I learned as a young student has become an integral source of knowledge. But this is not the case for many musicians. In that respect, I have noticed the difficulties many students face in not having what I would call foundational knowledge. In the context of scales, I'm particularly referring to key signatures and intervals. Key signatures are the ABC of major scales and minor scales, and delightfully also with the minors, both harmonic and melodic scales. While some might reconsider dusting off the grade one to five theory books with a renewed motivation and incentive in helping their playing, others might feel a despondency. To the former, I would say, go for it with absolute assurance that you won't regret it. To the despondent, I would say, worry not. You can also learn theory within the context of learning your instrument. But theory is theory, and it needs to be learnt to progress with your scales, which are invaluable for the health and well-being of your playing and your relationship to your instrument. Their value is far beyond what many believe is simply a necessary evil to pass an exam. Scales are the foundation, the roots on which accuracy, technicality, fluency, confidence and even musicality relies. I'm not going to persuade you by using the scales are fun scenario, but I can tell you with absolute assurance that there is a reason and a purpose for scales. And by taking this analytical and systematic process through breaking down the scale into incremental pieces will be super fulfilling and will enrich your playing and your confidence. Of that, I can give you my 100% assurance. At this point, I should mention that I will leave jazz related scales, such as the blue scales, in the expert hands of my Samic Learners Evolution co-director, Chris Jolly. In my practical talk, Playing with Science in Scales 1 and 2, I emphasize the concept of retrieval rather than memory in building the layers of learning in scales. This is key to your becoming autonomous and that means self-governing in not being in not only being proficient and confident in scales, but the impact scales will have throughout your playing. In other words, your proficiency in scale nourishes every aspect of your playing, from your brain and processing speed of information to every area of your practical playing. For a wind player, fingers, fingering, embouchure, and breath support to your confidence, commitment and well-being. Because autonomy refers to both how you play your scales and how you feel about playing scales. This is really the crux of where science comes in. Identifying resistance as a potential obstacle and exposing possible fears you might have related to that challenge be it scales or some other learning project. This is important in establishing a positive mindset. And as we all know, a positive mindset will impact enormously in a successful outcome. Your instruction, your narrative, developed in practice for confidence in performance. Cultivating a positive mindset comes from having a systematic process 
a step-by-step -step action plan. This is particularly important in the beginning stages where you are building your personalised roadmap of a learning of a new task. The beginning of any new task is almost always the toughest part of the process. By establishing a plan of action and breaking down the task of playing scales into bite-sized pieces will give you confidence in a step-by-step -step process. In that way, reducing, if not eliminating, being fearful at the prospect of scales in the early stages and making friends with scales. Having a systematic process, a step-by-step -step action plan will also give you the opportunity to recognise the little successes from your step-by-step -step goals. I have referred to motive in both practical scales videos and must emphasise this again. To unleash the power in motivating and driving your determination and commitment to undertake a new challenge, it is about finding the motive which is important to you. That you can fully feel and identify the reason for what you are striving to achieve and thereby identify a value, a worth for persevering. To impress another that your teachers say they are important or even to gain a high, gain a high mark in an exam, none of the reasons will cut it when the going gets rough. You must find your reason which is meaningful to you. It might be for the simplest reason, like a student of mine expressed, I don't want to be afraid of scales anymore. Or another student who simply stated, I want to get to grips with scales to feel their benefit in the rest of my playing. It might be that you want to play a certain piece which you have lots of scales in, perhaps a classical concerto. Aside from the undeniable value and the proficiency scales will give, enhance the technical aspect of your playing. To have a fear of something in your playing casts a shadow. And let's face it, scales are a hard topic to hide from. They are everywhere in the music we all play from Baroque to contemporary. But crucially, while I give you the many reasons, it's down to you to find your motive, your reason. Before I get underway, I'm going to illustrate the point of retrieval and memory in the context of learning and playing scales. Retrieval comes from knowledge, and that knowledge is theory, which, once learnt, incremental step by step, will never be forgotten. A bit like riding a bike. bike. Memory, in the context of scale books, unless you have a photographic memory, can be unreliable, particularly when put under pressure. Even then, scale books, and I'm now referring to scale books for wind players, fingerings for keyboard and string players give scales books a different purpose. But scale books for any musician will not give you transferable knowledge. For instance, if you are memorising a movement from a concerto and therefore can identify a scale, arpeggio, dominant or diminished seventh. All memory has to start with knowledge and is then about retrieval of that knowledge processed into coded instruction, which will be your narrative and indeed mine for playing. Just think about this for a minute in other areas of your life, your filing system for your music or documents on your computer or mobile phone how you organise your personal possessions, your purse, handbag or work bag. You have actively participated in organising where you put your documents or possessions. Ever tried to find a document in someone else's PC? This is a personalised process. Having just moved house, the possession bit is fresh in my mind. OK, so let's get back to the job in hand, getting that systematic process, the action plan. But quick summary so far of some crucial instructive words 
which will guide you in building your layers of learning within a systematic process, your action plan, your roadmap in learning scales. Knowledge, assumed knowledge, or worse still, feeling ashamed for not having certain knowledge can be a horrible feeling. It also inhibits positive learning when hearing that inside voice, sometimes referred to as the third voice, saying, I should know that, saps the spirit. Self-credibility and self-worth are fundamental to motivation and resilience in learning. In that sense, to create the best climate for learning is so important. It is also proven in sport, for instance, where you can do it or pushing that extra few seconds on the running machine or in swimming to make the desired number. This might not be the end goal, but the recognition for the little step goal achievements is the food of motivation spurring you on. Motive and intention. Spend time, and it might take time, to find that motive which fires you, gives a reason, a value that means something to you. Imagine being a person who has always thought of running the marathon with a long term goal in mind, is perhaps also motivated by fitness and getting a training program underway. Accepting it's going to be a journey with challenges, but nonetheless, you feel a spark, an ownership of this intention, the end goal, the progression steps, which will get you there. Holistic learning, getting the intellectual knowledge, the brain, the emotional, psychological climate, heart, and the practical, technical, systematic process, action plan, journey plan. Make your choice to which of these words or even replace with words of your choice. This is about ownership, which includes your choice of words. Using words which are meaningful to you is crucial. This talk is about preparing the ground for scales to fertilize, to optimize not only a successful outcome playing the scale, but most crucially, that the systematic process, the step-by-step -step action plan, will give you a sense of achievement, accomplishment, reason to celebrate the incremental steps you have learnt on the way. The scales in three easy steps, or quick learning scales, styled teaching, might be hugely tempting, but they do not account for the fact that we all, and I include myself, learn differently and at different speeds. This is where the concept of breaking down the scale and building your layers of learning is so crucial, not only in securing a robust and successful outcome, but that your attitude throughout the learning process is thorough, positive and transparent. In that way, also eliminating the painful, it was fine in my practice scenario. Ownership of your systematic process will reap untold rewards. There are some wonderful theory models you can learn, which I will leave you with. For some, these might be familiar, but have been discarded and perhaps bypassed in the hope of a shortcut. These will, in the end, leave the practical playing of the scales vulnerable to pressure elements and with it compromising your confidence and your commitment. Confidence and commitment is a state of mind which comes from a self-belief in retrieval of knowledge, informing your instruction, which in turn is your narrative applied to each note, each accidental within the practical playing. In that, I include embouchure, fingerings, finger shape, finger weight, and breath support. Honestly, jugglers have nothing on what us musicians having to deal with. So you can acknowledge that for starters. I will now articulate some essential theory models. 
Father Charles goes down and ends battle, the Order of the Sharps. Battle ends and down goes Charles's father, the Order of the Flats. Then there is circles of fifths starting on C for sharps counting C as the first note and counting up five notes. C, D, E, F, G. G major. G major has one sharp, which is F sharp. G, A, B, C, D. D major, which has two sharps. F sharp and C sharp. Circles of far fourths, again starting on C as the first note, but this time counting up four notes. C, D, E, F. F major, which has one flat, which is battle, B flat. Counting up four notes from F, but remember the one flat you just identified. F, G, A, B flat, B flat major, which has two flats, B flat and E flat. Some might already be getting impatient at this slow, arduous process. But once again, assuring you that if this has not been learnt in your grade five theory or indeed forgotten along the way, you will now be planting lasting and robust knowledge. Playing scales combines putting theory, quite literally, into practice. Leaving you with a wonderful thought that by learning your major scales, you will be halfway to learning your minors. Hence the term relative major of a minor scale, which literally means that a minor scale will share the same key signature as a major scale. This is where interval comes in, and there again, knowledge of your major scales will help. Forgive me for the pun, but these models, the systematic process and step-by-step -step action plan are key to success with scales, with all the added benefits thrown in. Super important is to set yourself reasonable targets, like the sport person who has an end goal but must establish short-term goals. In learning scales initially, setting scales with one, two or three sharps and flats, because you are not only learning the scales, but also the process and the theory. Working out all your majors using the order of sharps and flats and circles of fifths and fourths. Leaving natural minors, harmonics and melodics for another playing with science in scales. For now, I will wish you courage and determination in all your endeavours in pursuit of your dedication and devotion to music and the part you are playing in musical excellence.